Module 5, Principles of Growth and Development. Growth is described as the physical increase in the body's size, while development is a progression of changes in the child toward maturity or maturation. We do have cephalocaudal growth, which is an orderly pattern from the head downward, and proximodistal growth, which starts in the center and progresses outward. With developmental tasks, there, these are milestones of basic achievements that are associated with each stage of development, and each must be successfully completed before moving on to the next stage. Height should increase in predictable patterns, but is often seen in spurts. Patterns are monitored and plotted on growth charts and involve skeletal growth. Weight also progresses in predictable patterns and is also monitored and plotted on the graph. The child's body proportions are going to vary and change through different stages of life. Standards of growth will be based on predictable patterns or growth curves. So once again, we use that growth chart. We monitor their development and compare it to other children in past measurements. But this is only used for comparison. So in other words, it might reveal a potential issue that may need to be addressed. We do have uh, standards of development that use standardized testing tools to help identify delays in what's considered a normal pattern. And again, is used for comparison only and doesn't necessarily mean there's a problem. For example, there's a Denver developmental screening test. And let me give you an example. My son took this test when he was being screened for kindergarten at age four. Well, at age two, he received a set of Lego building blocks for his birthday, never played with wooden blocks. And I always believed to give him a pen and pencil or crayon and paper and let him draw whatever he wanted. I didn't actually sit down with him and show him how to draw a circle or how to draw a square, etc. And these are a couple of the tasks that are involved in um, the D Denver Developmental Screening Test. Well, needless to say, he wasn't very good at stacking wooden blocks to maintain a certain position. He was trying to link them together like you do with Lego blocks. And he didn't know what a circle was. He didn't know what a triangle was because his mother had never showed him. Well, he went ahead and went into kindergarten and his teacher that was doing the test to begin with and telling me that he, I was doing him a disservice if I put him in kindergarten could not praise him enough and told me if all of my children were like him, I would be out of a job. So, you know, these are just comparisons. They're not exact. They don't show everything and they shouldn't be used uh, specifically to determine if a child is ready to move on for certain phases of their life. Uh, the range of time versus the exact time of development. Again, this is only a guide that can help reveal potential issues that may need to be addressed. This is just a chart that kind of shows the way the body develops as the child ages. So parental traits can appear or could reappear in later generations and can actually influence physical characteristics such as gender, race, eye color, height, and weight, as well as overall growth and development. Some diseases, physical and mental disorders can be genetically transmitted. 
personality characteristics, including temperament, are genetically influenced. The quality of nutrition during the growing years also has a major effect on the overall health and development and throughout life. Children need adequate food and nutrients to grow, to resist infection and disease, develop, to develop proper motor skills, and develop good eating habits. Healthy eating is enjoying your food, but we need to focus on whole fruits, a variety of vegetables, making half of the grains that we eat whole grains, and vary the protein routine. Get dairy, calcium rich foods, eat less saturated fat, drink and eat less sodium, and don't sugarcoat it. In other words, we don't need the simple sugars. Physical activity. Set a good example for your child and establish a routine. Have an activity party. Set up a home gym. Move it. Maybe give activity gifts. Many aspects of the environment are also going to affect growth and development, such as family structure, socioeconomic level, and play and entertainment, which Play is an essential part of development, and entertainment can have positive or negative influences. But we should encourage the child to use their imagination in positive ways. But then we also need to look at the homeless family. They could be homeless related to various causes, which can create additional stress, problems getting appropriate care, or having basic needs met. There might be a lack of adequate shelter. So the nurse needs to focus on positive factors, offering down-to-earth suggestions and ways to help the family. Providing information about outreach programs in the community could also be important. And then we need to look at divorce. And the child. The child's reaction can vary from feeling guilty for the divorce to blaming the parents for the divorce. Counseling can be an important step for the child and the nurse should always clarify who's the custodial parent. Children are going to react in various ways if their parent or parents remarry. And then we need to look at the latchkey child who comes home to an empty house because parents are still at work. They often have fears of being home alone. If there are several siblings, the older child might be expected to be the caregiver to younger siblings. It is important for these latchkey children to have a plan of action in place and safety measures. Maybe suggest some after school programs or activities. Then we have the runaway child. Most of these kids are 10 to 17 years old, and they might run away in response to circumstances that they view as too difficult to handle. Some are throwaways who are forced to leave home because they don't feel they're wanted by the adults in the home. These kids have a risk for stealing, drug dealing, prostitution, and they live on the streets. There are numerous programs available to help them, but there's no quick fix. These children are often seen at healthcare facilities with STIs, pregnancy, AIDS, and or drug overdose. So another question. Many factors influence a child's growth and development. Being a latchkey child can be influential because of what? Older siblings who are caregivers after school often do not have clear cut guidelines or expectations. 
So there's a lot of human development theories, which are a series of overlapping stages that occur in predictable patterns. Stages and development might differ from child to child. So Sigmund Freud, he defines the oral stages as being from zero to two years, the anal stage from ages two to three years, the phallic or infant genital stage from ages three to six years, the latency stage from ages six to 10 years, and the genital stage from ages 11 to 13 years. Eric Erickson talks about trust versus mistrust from ages zero to one year, and autonomy versus doubt and shame from ages one to three, with initiative versus guilt from ages three to six years, industry versus inferiority ages six to 12 years, identity versus role confusion ages 12 to 18 years, intimacy versus isolation, which is early adulthood, generativity versus self-absorption from young to middle adulthood, ego integrity versus despair in the old age. Paget states since a motor phase is ages zero to two, pre-operational phase, ages two to seven, concrete operations from seven to 11 with formal operations, 12 to 15. Lawrence Kohlberg talks about pre-conventional or pre-moral level, stage zero where there's no moral sensitivity from ages zero to two. Stage one is punishment and obedience orientation, which would be ages two to three. Stage two is naive instrumental self-indulgence, or ages four to seven. The conventional level is stage three, or good boy orientation, ages seven to 10. And stage four is law and order orientation, ages 10 to 12. Post-conventional or principled level is stage five, where we have social contract orientation, ages 13 to 18. Stage six, personal principles. And he doesn't feel this is attained very frequently. Carl Jung focuses on an inner sequence of events that shape the personality. Describes archetypes as predetermined patterns for growth and development. And in the first three years, coordinating experiences and learning helps make that conscious personality. The following years make sense of the environment. And then responses to experiences is more critical. There is concern that theories are gender and culturally specific that have led to new research, such as that by Carol Gilligan um, with moral development of males and females and Patricia Green with the empirical and theoretical understanding of cultural diversity. I don't get real in depth with these uh, theories of development, but um, you'll hear them a lot, especially with your psychology courses. So Eric Erickson developed a theory on the growth and development of children based on what? psychosocial development. So communication is the primary source of data collection. It does offer anticipatory guidance and helps with understanding the growth and development of the child and influences on the child and family caregivers is really important for effective communication. 
Principles of communication include spoken and written words and body language. Listening, which includes attending and following. Time management. The use of open-ended questions followed by guided statements. Avoid those communication blocks and use professional interpreter as needed. When communicating with infants, evaluate actions and respond to those sensory cues. They spend, or we need to spend time calming down and connecting with the infant and establishing a relationship with a family caregiver. Consider using sensory play activities. As we communicate with young children, allow the family caregiver to hold the child as you initiate conversation and avoid sudden, abrupt, or noisy approaches. Allow the young child to handle or explore equipment and get on their eye level when speaking with them. Speaking in slow, clear, positive voice with simple words and keep sentences short and be positive. Don't try to use analogies with the young child and make sure you pay attention to the nonverbal cues. When communicating with a school-aged child, begin by calming them down or connecting with them. Briefly acknowledge the family caregivers and include that child in the plan of care. Use simple, concrete responses to questions and be sensitive to the child's concerns. Play reenactment um, or artwork can give insight into how well the child understands a procedure or experience. Elicit their cooperation by offering reasonable and limited choices. And when you communicate with adolescents, this could be challenging. Make sure you respond positively to the individuals who show genuine interest in them. Focus the interview on them instead of the problem. And you might need to relate information that they don't wish others to know and respect their confidentiality. Listen in an open-minded way and avoid asking prying or embarrassing questions. Might Make contracts so communication can stay open and honest. And then we need to communicate with the family caregivers, where we identify the child's family caregivers and clarify their role. Include the caregivers in providing information, problem solving, and planning of care, and keep them informed of what's going on. Pay attention to verbal and nonverbal cues and provide positive reinforcement and ask open-ended questions. Compare what's actually happening with what the caregiver expects to be happening. Being alert to negative reactions from the child and provide anticipatory guidance related to normal growth and development. Understanding factors and influences and normal or expected patterns related to growth and development of the infant, child, and adolescent is important. Talking to the child at their level of development will gain you more information and help build that trust relationship. Teaching and working with the family caregivers helps make sure the child is going to receive appropriate care when they're discharged. The nurse needs to be aware that the child's age and stage of growth and development can affect the way the child copes with the situation or responds to treatment. Question. There are several principles of communication that affect communication with children. What's one of them? Time management. And now your post test. <laughs>